Good morning and welcome to the United in Christ Lutheran Parish. We open our service this morning with the confession and forgiveness of sins. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer of the day. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this Spirit. Transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd came together and was bewildered, because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is a birthday. It's the birthday of the whole church around the world. So at our house, when it's a birthday, we sing. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear church, happy birthday to you. So Jews were gathered in Jerusalem for Pentecost. It was like a Jewish Thanksgiving festival, celebrated seven weeks after Easter, or for us as Christians, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. The barley harvest was over and Jews gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, where they celebrated the giving of the law from God to Moses on Mount Sinai. But something happened that had never happened before. On this particular Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is being poured out upon the entire community of believers. Just as Jesus had promised before he ascended into heaven. 
10 days earlier. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, the community begins witnessing in multiple languages. So when I was a kid, my mom and dad spoke Norwegian. My dad learned it from his grandmother, or from his mother, Ingeborg, my grandma. She came and lived with us for a time when I was like in grades first and second. She spoke Norwegian, having been uh, born and raised there and came over to the United States through Ellis Island as a teenager. Her older brother Peter was farming in Watford City, North Dakota. So she spoke Norwegian fluently. My dad and mom typically spoke Norwegian around Christmas time. Well, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, because if they were discussing what gifts they were going to buy for my siblings and I, they spoke Norwegian so we couldn't understand. But I'd picked up a little Norwegian. And then when I was in high school, I had a choice. I could choose Spanish, German, or French. I chose French. And that class, when I was a ninth grader, uh, was taught by a French teacher who was in her first year of teaching. And I just remember a little bit of what I learned in that class because it was rather rowdy. Je suis Philippe. I am Philippe. That's about the extent of my French. And then when I attended Wartburg Seminary in Dubuque, Iowa, the summer before my first year there, I took a five-week crash course in Greek. You know, Greek is the language that the New Testament was written in. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, so as a seminary student at a Lutheran seminary, we needed to be able to study the Old and New Testaments in their original languages. So I did pretty well in that summer Greek class. I know at home somewhere I have five or six CDs that if I listen to, I can learn Spanish. I tried that a few years ago and kind of gave up on that. But I still have those CDs. Now, I don't know if you speak another language other than English, but can you imagine speaking another language other than English? Speaking it fluently. Even though you'd never studied the language before? Well, that's what happened on this day of Pentecost. Believers were gathered in a house together and God sent the Holy Spirit down upon them and they appeared as like flames of fire above their heads. And they began to share about the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. To people in their own native languages, even though these believers had never spoken those languages before. It was a miracle, that first Pentecost. And some criticized. They said that the people speaking these other languages, they were just intoxicated. They'd had too much to drink this early in the morning. But then Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, he got up and wanted to talk about that. He said, I know it might sound like these men are drunk, 
but they are not. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what the prophet Joel imagined long ago concerning the outpouring of God's Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit at work in the lives of believers. And they were sharing the story of Jesus, speaking languages they had never studied before or spoken before. And if you continue reading in the second chapter of Acts, you'll discover Peter's marvelous sermon. And after preaching that sermon, 3,000 became believers in Jesus that day. So Jews had gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, the day that they were honoring the law. And the Holy Spirit shows up and turns their lives upside down. Now, can you imagine if the day of Pentecost did not happen? I wonder what Jesus' disciples would have done. Remember, Jesus had ascended into heaven ten days earlier. And if the Holy Spirit hadn't come on that Pentecost, I wonder if Matthew might have gone back to tax collecting. Or James and John back to fishing for fish instead of fishing for people. But they didn't. Because under the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, their faith became alive. And they shared about the love, grace, and forgiveness available to all people in Jesus our Savior. Remember, that's what Peter said, quoting the prophet Joel. In the latter days, I will pour out my spirit upon who? All humanity. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I love the banners that you see hanging behind the altar here at Concordia. Stir us, Lord, for ministry in daily lives. That's what Jesus calls each one of us to do. To minister in our daily lives. Whether we're retired or working full-time, back at work or working from home, caring for children or grandkids, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I are gifted. That first Pentecost, God gave the church, you and me and all people, a mission, and God gave us a purpose. To share the love of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation Jesus offers to all people. And we can do that. Because on the day that we were baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon us and filled us with new life. Whatever we do, wherever we go, you and I are called to witness. I was reading about the life of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She was known around the world for her study of death and dying. And that first book she wrote something like 50 years ago. 
And as she was researching that book, she would interview people. People who were dying in the hospital. So she was studying how they felt about death as it approached. And when Elizabeth Kubler-Ross went from room to room, she began to notice a pattern. Sometimes she would go into the room of a dying person, and that person would be calm and at peace. She also noticed that this was often the case when a certain person on the housekeeping staff had cleaned that room. One day, Dr. Ross bumped into that orderly out in the hallway, and she asked her, what are you doing with my patients? And this housekeeping staff person thought she was going to be criticized or reprimanded for something, so she said, I'm, I'm not doing anything. No, no, responded Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. It's a good thing. After you go into their rooms, they seem to be at peace. What are you doing with my patients? I just talk to them, the housekeeper said. I've had two babies of my own die on my lap. But God never abandoned me. I tell them that. I tell them that they are never alone, that God is with them, and they don't have to be afraid. That's ministry in daily life. Speaking words of love and grace, speaking about the love of Jesus for all people, that's what you and I are called to do. Through the power of the Holy Spirit living and working in us. And the day of Pentecost didn't just happen over 2,000 years ago. God continues to pour the Holy Spirit upon the people of God so that we are empowered to share the good news of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. When I was in seminary, our Lutheran Church history professor, Ralph Query, made us memorize the words of Luther's small catechism. And you remember, Luther wrote this so that parents would have something to teach their children. Because back in Luther's day, Sunday school hadn't been created yet. So parents were responsible for teaching the faith of Jesus Christ to their children, to their families. And you know, if you grew up Lutheran or went through confirmation, the question Luther asks continually through all the pages of this small catechism is the question, what does this mean? And did you hear the people in Jerusalem <laughs> ask that Lutheran question on the day of Pentecost? What does this mean? Well, Ralph made my seminary class memorize the pages of the small catechism. And in that first section of the catechism, Luther teaches us about the Apostles' Creed where in three parts or three articles we confess what we believe. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And it's after that third part of the Apostles' Creed 
Luther asks the question, what does this mean? When we confess, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And Luther wrote, I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. As God's people, because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the whole church around the world, you and I have been given a mission and a purpose. Share the love of Jesus Christ with all people. And let them know that in Jesus Christ, he offers you and me forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And I'm so glad the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was not a one-time event 2,000 years ago. God continues to pour the Holy Spirit upon the people of God today. Amen. We join in singing Spirit of Gentleness.
Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day. We especially remember the family and friends of Travis Immemora, or of Tasted, Darlene Gast, and Blade Halverson. Lord, we ask that you would reach out a healing hand upon Ann Peterson, Lou Ann Vanderberg, Patricia Gustafson, Levi Qualley, Deanne Larson, Stephen Jacobson, Linda Cornelson, Butch Olson, Celia Gertson, Chris Meldy, Gwen Sorensen, Myrna Moore, Chelsea Klinger, Rodney Rolland, Rory Hamry, and Percy Miranda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts that we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of the new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and give you peace. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.